All right, I'm out skiing with my niece, Chloe. Hello. What do we got here, Chloe? Otter tracks. How can we tell that they're otter tracks? Because you can tell. Jump, jump, slide. Jump, jump, slide. Yep. They slide on their bellies. Then... They do a little jump and a slide. Yep. We got two sets here. One right there. One right there. It could be. And it's got... Otter babies. It's got Piper super interested. We've got Denali out for all to see. That cloud to the right is pretty cool. And slowly pan, because I'm zoomed in this way. There is home. That is where we we're headed. We took off to the left, went way up over this knob here, came down, are back on the lake. And I'm gonna swing around, don't get dizzy. And we're going to head back home. Yep. All right. Beautiful day for skiing. No wind. Probably about 35 degrees. Mm -hmm. I am too hot. Yeah, it's pretty toasty. All right, let's head back to the lodge. I'm about halfway home with this load of freight. I've got two more at the truck, like I said. I was stopping to show you some tracks here. Zach and I have been seeing a lot of tracks. Uh, down lower, we've set a couple game cams out. Let me show you here. We're pretty sure they're wolf. So they run off that way, that's set there. And uh, yeah, you can see those are, that's a pretty big track. Look at these guys here. Man. Yep. So those guys run off in that direction. They came from that direction there. They've headed up. And according to the tracks we've seen, I'm certain that there's a pack of three or four, maybe five. So they're, they're out here. I've seen more wolf tracks this winter than I have all the rest of my winters combined out here. So I thank God that we haven't had a lot of snow this year. So that gives the moose a chance. Normally we'll have three or four, five feet on the level and it's just too hard for the moose to get around and they are easy pickings for the wolves. Uh, this year, two to three feet on the level, tops. And at least the moose can have a chance. The wolf still probably have the upper hand. Uh, they can outnumber them, they can flank them, and you know, hunt as a pack, obviously. But uh, at least the moose can run through this stuff. It's not chest deep on them. All right, I gotta get back on the trail. the lumber is going because just as you walk down from the deck coming down to the dock from about this spot 
all the way to the boathouse here is very swampy. So that's uh, gonna be our walkway, a little boardwalk if you will. Welcome to Joe's Appliance Repair Shop, located out here in remote Alaska. It's hard to get your appliance to me, but if you can, I'll fix it. So I'm out here in the shop, and the dryer that we picked up on Facebook for free two years, three years ago, a bearing went out on it, and I'll show you that. Hang on. It's crazy, I got two dryers taken apart in here. All right, so right down in here, um, the motor, you've got the motor, and then you've got this little, see it? spring-loaded tensioner to keep the belt tight that goes around the drum of the dryer. And uh, I'm sure this is super exciting for you guys. Hang in there, this is kind of crazy. So it keeps the belt tight and uh, enables the motor to turn the drum. That's how your clothes go around and around in circle. Anyways, it's been squealing like crazy, super noisy. You turn it on and it's just absolutely noisy. It works. The propane, uh, it dries clothes. It turns it. I don't quite know how it turned it. Uh, after investigating, I don't know if you can see this bearing here wallowed out. It's not quite a perfect circle now, so it, it doesn't fit on this shaft anymore very well. So that was part of the noise. And then the other thing is, is this roller that the belt uh, goes over should be perfectly round. I don't know if you can see It is grooved. I'll get a better shot here. So that groove in there should not be there uh, this Upper deck is what it should be like all the way across uh, You can see that's a little more natural there, but you can still see a groove was wore down uh, this roller got caught in this position and the belt has been running and melting through this plastic all the way down through there. Um, I'm surprised it didn't eat up the belt. Look at this thing. This is a belt on a dryer. That is how big it is. It's tiny. Um, it just sets right on the drum here. It turns the whole drum. And then, obviously, it goes through the tensioner. And this particular belt got caught uh, and, and rubbed a hole in that tensioner. It's nuts. Okay, so the reason I have them both apart, when you buy a dryer at the store, they come, a, a gas dryer specifically, they come prepared for natural gas. Most people have natural gas piped into their homes. We have propane, we don't have natural gas out here. So you have to convert the dryer. The dryer I picked up on Facebook two, three years ago, I converted. I've already had this sucker torn apart. I put it back together. And now we picked up this one. It's a really nice dryer, uh, older model, which I like because built better, right? Older things tend to be built better. It's in really good shape. I've taken it all apart. It's in a lot better shape than this one was. And this was a newer dryer. So get to the point here. I have to convert this recent one that we purchased over to propane. They're the same brand, they're both Whirlpool, and it's the same conversion kit for most of the models. So instead of buying another conversion kit, I'm tearing this old one apart, the one that's squealing like a pig and the bearings shot, to take my previously purchased conversion kit out of it and put it in our newly purchased dryer. Did you guys follow all that? Bottom line is, is we're switching dryers because the old one's kaput, the new one needed to be converted to propane and I needed the conversion kit out of this one and I put it in this one. Saved a few bucks. I think literally I saved like 20 bucks. Um, a lot of time involved. Uh, the only extra time was tearing this one apart to take the old conversion kit out. But I still have to tear this one apart. And this is what you're getting to. Let me show you this real quick. There's where the gas comes in, the black line into the regulator here. That is where the gas shoots out and turns into flame in that tunnel. Just like any barbecue or anything else. So that 
orif orifice orifice uh, had to be switched out. And then this little guy right here, um, you pull the factory little thing out and you stick this guy in. All right, enough with boring you guys with dryers. It's just another thing that I've got to do out here to keep this place running uh, so that the ladies can do laundry. We have a ton of laundry to do during the summer, sheets and towels and everything while we're making uh, cabins over. So this is actually a very important project and I'm getting close. I just got to put it back together reversed way that I took it apart and that's always a bit tricky for me. So I'm going to quit vlogging. I'm going to get my mind back on the task and get this thing back together. All right, I have the dryers back together. This one is going to the dump. Um, it the bearing actually there's two bearings shot, and I'm just I'm not the parts. You go to find the parts for these things. The price of a bearing just to replace it on this was the same price that I got this one for on Facebook. I'm all about reducing, reusing, and recycling. Uh, but when they make it not cost effective to do that, it goes to the dump. Um, I finished the job and it paid me a measly nine cents. That's what I found in the new dryer. So cha-ching in the money, baby. Well, we are on set here at um, Vermonte Films and um, got the film crew over my left shoulder uh, from Germany. They're doing a documentary on Chloe uh, and a little bit on Eileen, but mostly Chloe's life in the Alaska bush. So we're out here falling some trees and uh, getting, it's it's a natural setting for the girls, but we're having them do a little bit more just for, just for cinema. Um, Chloe's used my chainsaw before, but today I want her to use it a little bit more just so she's comfortable with it and because people want to see it on film. So that's about it, we're about to uh, fall a tree. We have already fallen this tree right here. You can see the carnage. Got it loaded in the uh, otter sled here. If it does come this way, I'll just dive that way. Gotcha. Well, at least somebody did. Always being interviewed. I know, I was too. Yeah. You did great. All right, so I'm sitting down here by my cabin waiting for my turn to offload the wood. Uh, they wanted Chloe and Eileen to drive up first with their machine and offload the little bit of wood that they had. So they're filming that right now. Um, we didn't get a lot of wood today. It wasn't really um, a full on, full effort outing to get firewood. It was more or less for the film crew to get some good shots of us getting some firewood. Um, more or less Chloe and Eileen getting firewood with us, because uh, that's what the documentary is about, is Chloe and Eileen and their life out here. So I have to practice patience here because I'm like, Ugh. and they're like, can you do the shot again? And uh, 
can you, can we <clears throat> drive through that meadow again? And can we, you know, it's, it's uh, doing shots over, go, go back and do it again. Um, and I'm like, I'm the kind of guy that's like, let's get it done. Uh, let's, let's just go home. Let's get the tree fell, uh, cut up in the sleds. Let's get it home. Take a deep breath, Joe. Um, it's fun, you know. You don't always get a film crew out here to film your nieces living this cool life. So, uh, you know what? If it wasn't for Zach uh, having the patience to get the camera out, we wouldn't have this vlog most of the time. So, I'm learning patience. Uh, it's all good. Anyways, it was a fun outing. Uh, we did get some firewood, so we accomplished something. And, uh, you know, there'll be a, a cool documentary about Chloe and Eile in German one of these days. All right, sounds like I'm going to be up here soon. All right, what's going on, Em? Well, the helicopter just came here. We to took a ride on the snow machine to pick us up. <laughs> you no, think? No, no. no. Into both. All right, so uh, the film crew is still out here, and they wanted to film the helicopter coming and bringing us a load of supplies. Um, they were currently filming. Chloe and Ailey doing school and then the helicopter comes and uh, now they're filming them offloading supplies and all that because it is something that we do um, semi-regularly to get a, a aircraft load full of supplies uh, right now we can still do the snowmobile trail and get supplies but um, they wanted to get the helicopter bringing in some supplies for for good tv you know so um i have been pulling Bo and emma around in a sled while they've been filming inside and uh, i think we're gonna go down just after the helicopter leaves uh, so that i don't interfere with the filming of that and i'll get a shot of the helicopter leaving the gorgeous day and so it's gonna make for a good shot up here i think All right, what do you think, guys? Good. Cool. All right, let's go down and see what kind of supplies we got. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I got anything. Maybe. All right, let's go find out. Yeah. All right, I'm taking the kids out on a snowmobile ride. We're packing trails. We've had a terrible windstorm uh, over Easter, and uh, it was 40, 50 mile an hour gusts. Just and and it was snowing. Uh, it called for like five to ten inches so we did get a lot of snow no way of knowing exactly how much we got because of all the wind but I've got like I said the kids out on a ride right now and it is just gorgeous uh, up here April 1st and we found this nice little cornice uh, well at least a, a snow edge I don't know if you can see it there but the kids are gonna try to slide down it Ailey's going first she can pack down a trail for me all right yeah, go for it Ailey the test, the test, uh, I don't want to call you a test dummy, but you're, but you're the test dummy. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with that and being called that. <laughs> nice. That's a long run. That's so fun. Go. <laughs> there goes Piper. All right, go M. All right, I'll come pick you guys up.
I guess I am the ski lift. Oh, I wouldn't. Well, they want me to go down. But then no one's up here to drive the machine down and someone has to climb back up. The going down sounds fun. The climbing back up does not sound fun. But you know what? I'm gonna do it. All right, say goodbye to my ride. Piper watching. All right, here I go. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that's, I turned a little sideways. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. I know, that's what I said. All right, let's see what it looks like from here. I think I can make it up this hillside. There's just enough crunch There's just enough crunch in the snow to where I can kick in some toe holds. And I think I can get straight up this incline. Goodness, can you guys tell how steep this is? Let me go the other way. Turn around. Here we go. I don't know if the, uh, the video shows the enormity of the angle here. It is way steeper than a 45. Almost to the top, and I <laughs> I feel like I can't get a good toe hold. Oh, here we go. One slow step at a time. Oh, I'm almost there. Ah! All right, I got it. One misstep, and I would have gone all the way down. Oh, the kids made it too. You guys making it look easy. <laughs> It's not. I don't think Emma will be able to make it up. All right, let's go rescue him. Then we'll go down the roller coaster. Okay. The Monte Brothers. <laughs>